going to take you to a small village towards the north of Kerala, a beautiful village on the banks of River Nila. And one of my colleagues and in his speech mentioned about a small mobile app which about the 44 rivers and some, I need to connect some information about that. Few of us started uh, looking at, we used to hear that from uh, age people that, you know, youth is getting disconnected from our tradition and culture. What happened to the youth? They are not concerned about the tradition and culture and they all uh, restrict themselves to the specific space. Um, what we were trying to do is actually, can we bridge the gap, like youth can still involve in the social process of safeguarding the tradition and culture. So I'm going to share you, I'm going to take you, uh, you all to the village called Arangotikara. It's a small village on the banks of River Nila. And we started a small group, Wiley Folklore Group, uh, in uh, 14 years back uh, to safeguard the traditions nourished on the banks of River Nila. And along with that, we connected with many, many aspects of the social challenges. And we see how youth can connect and bring value into that, actually. So this is a question we often get. Learning folklore or learning tradition, culture, art, or it means that we need to go back to our old days, or it's something like, you know, we should live in the old way of living. So we realized that, can we do something to preserve it and document it? and make sure that the generations which follow us should carry that message from generations to generation. So when we started in 2004, we were just eight to nine people and it started as a small performing group. I'll give you a small example like, I come from a technology background, I'm an IT engineer, I work close to the IC, uh, SEMS, our office is very nearby, and uh, I've been in IT industry for the last 18 years. And what thought and process actually right from childhood, I had an inclination to listen to the folk arts and traditional because I belong to a place called Cheradurthi, that's a famous for Kerala Kalamandalam and uh, culture. And, but I always keep a passion for traditional art forms, folk art forms. And after my studies, when I go back to my village, I was searching for a space for a youth to engage and to understand, then I started, okay, that is a space like, you know, whenever you travel to your village, you can see a library in your village. So you go and grab books from there and try to understand it. Since I don't keep a passion for uh, literature, I always go for a creative writing. So I search for books and I got a book about folklore. And it is a word which came to my mind. It's a new word. I try to dig in deep into that. What is folklore means? Then I realized that in late 90s, Kerala, was in the, uh, Kerala is a pioneer in that process of bringing folklore into uh, mainstream. It was a stream studied in the part of a social science. And Kerala Calicut University was the one who started the uh, MA process uh, degree in that. And we started, I started reading and I came to know that Trishur, there is a group of people still working and close, closely working on the field of folklore and traditional knowledge. And I wrote to them and they connected and I started going with them wherever they go for speeches, classes. I started accompanying whenever I get time because since I work in uh, IT, I have a luxury of getting weekends off, Saturday, Sunday. So every Saturday, Sunday, I used to go with the, like they take sessions about uh, food culture, traditions, art forms and whatever you say in related to folklore. And 2004, January 25th, we arranged a small workshop in our village in uh, Arangotigara. And we had a few youngsters coming and performing the art form. In that event, the people from Tushur, they suggested, why don't you look at, or you start a small team to exclusively look at preserving and promoting the culture back on the banks of Rivanila. So that's the beginning of Wiley. When we started, we were just eight people with the folklore, uh, folk expressions group. And the idea is that, how can we connect? How can the youth go and sit with the old people, learn the art form, and spread it across to the next generation. And we work with schools and colleges, and we take sessions of workshops to make sure that the students understand the pain and uh, process which the traditional people are suffering, especially traditional occupation. And working with uh, youth in the space, we notice an issue. Issues like when we perform folk arts, 
as a youth you have a lot of potential and energy and you always want changes in the life so how you make sure that when you bring changes into your uh, performance how can the old people will go and accept it so always if you start playing a different instrument in the particular song or particular uh, mode of performing you have a lot of challenges so we understand that okay folk performance should be in that way traditional way with the bare body or with the mass what you perform but as a youth where is the creativity what you can provide in that space so we realize that um, why don't we look at an alternative space for the youth to experiment and explore then that's where the uh, bamboo folks bamboo band born there is a story behind that um, one lady from japan she was here for learning uh, mohini atam and kudi atam she was with uh, varnuji nadana kairali ringala kuda tomo tomo was here and we together in a workshop uh, one famous writer ludik he was in ringala kuda and taking a workshop about the uh, you know vaitharis and she we got connected she took us into japan we were in mount fuji the volcano is not active now and we were staying with the world famous bamboo orchestra and we got amazed that the kind of talent they keep a single piece of a bamboo they make instruments it's so passionate so vigorous you know the way they make music and we stayed 5 days with aram say like we stayed with them comfortably with them in the mount fuji in the uh, foothills of mount fuji when we came back that put a seed in our minds that can we explore whether we had any pra- uh, history of tradition of bamboo it's so surprising that most of our traditional uh, folk especially tribal instruments are made up of bamboo but as see my, my friend mentioned evolution they switched into metals and other things but they had a bamboo tradition especially if we go to atapadi or vainad idiki any places we had a long tradition of using bamboo as instrument then our next attempt was can we harmonize all the instruments to make it as a band so that the space the youth can work and explore it so then we spent 3 4 years to bring a bamboo band and to harmonize all the instruments lucky we got support from many musicians who work closely with us tune the instruments lucky that we got one girl from uh, us she came to know about the she traveled all the way from us and she spent two months with us to notate what we are playing she was in a uh, uh, researcher in music so that's still going on you can go to youtube and you can search some of our composition it's a contemporary uh, pure youth oriented band and the idea is that that the space youth can explore their innovations and they can uh, experience it then it comes like uh, when we started the folk performing team we realized that we don't have any uh, people who can make the craft items masks costumes they all like you know it's sort of a vanish in the community we could even find out two people from the community lucky that we could trace one guy from our village who can make the costumes of a particular art form only one guy and all his relatives parents and all are left migrated to uh, construction other jobs what happened to that the reason is that he didn't leave the job mainly because this is transferred from his father is an sisters and is a traditional job he don't want to leave it so that's the only reason when we approached him he was in a very critical situation he was not able to sell his product he is not able to market his product he is not able to get raw materials he is not able to survive his family that is a pathetic situation if you look at a not example like you know it's well material is not a single example if you go to any traditional craft in the uh, in the society all are facing challenges we have many international design institutes and government departments what are they doing for that we have many design institutes we have national institute of fashion technology national institute of design kerala state of Indi- uh, design institute they are not bothered to work with the traditional people i can give a classic example like we made a film uh, about a mat weaving community in uh, kelimangalam near to sharno and we made the film two students with the help of some of our friends made the film sent the film to the international film festival in us smithsonian they given the award then hindu my close friend shaji wrote a good article lucky that you know the hindu paper got the message of that film they put it as a cover story in the back uh, page of hindu that is the time the guy from trivandrum office called this lady and inquired about this in our tourism department website they talk about the mat 
they tell like you no know, 25 years back the design which is put it in the mat got a unesco award it's there in the uh, tourism website it's there in all the uh, papers and books but if you go to the kilimangalam only lady one lady was sitting there it is in the stage of you know vanishing the building and everything she was still you know she she told me this word till my last breath and i'll come and work here whatever happens so we started working with her now it's like you know eight people started working on that uh, uh, that uh, community she started making mats so that's what we are trying to do so let's work on the traditional crafts which are in the banks of rivanilla support them bridge them as a gap bridge them as a uh, between the government and private institution make sure that we provide them design support we provide them financial support we provide them whatever support they need it's now is we are taking at initially we uh, piloted with the four uh, uh, pro- uh, crafts in the banks of rivanilla mat weaving pottery bell metal and bamboo now we are shifting to ender tradition crafts on the banks of rivanilla earlier it was named as eco bazaar now last year we renamed as a craftilla crafts of nila the innovators of craft the idea is that we work with all the design institutes government departments to make sure that each depart each uh, tradition how can we help them to survive in their field and let me get into the new field there's a story to tell you about this what we had experience is that we had two uh, research students from chennai uh, last year two years back and they came to wiley and they were doing a research the impact of wiley made in the society so we divided our audience into three wiley related members and the outside world the interesting observation from the two phd girls from chennai was that we could tap only 2 to 3 percentage of youth from our village what happened to the rest of the youth in our village there is a serious problem because youth is disconnected from all this that's the reason simple reason that we work only with the music and dance and folk people who are interested will connect people who are not interested they'll disconnect and we are not communicating with the medium which the youth is demanding so we are telling them like you know dance and you know songs are which is typical the classic example with the lesson we learned is that the film with two girls made which we sent to us we realized that these these two girls visited prabhavati chechi the mad viewer a week they spent with her wrote entire story challenges what she is facing they made the film and we helped them to uh, took the film we sent the film to the uh, uh, festival then we realized that if you provide the platform which the youth uh, youth feel comfortable if you do that there is a potential youth can be utilized in effective way for any social changes so that's a video we last year 2016 uh, november we started an initiative called wiley initiative for media action so that's actually uh, uh, bring youth close to uh, media and folklore and work close it's a creative space anything any any talents can work together and uh, there's another division under working under wiley that's most of our discussions if you look at it in the presentations today also it's all about learning creative learning alternative learning we realize that there should be this is a philosophy i don't know how many of you follow the international arena of development or uh, education there is a concept going on that's called a fifth space you have different spaces but if you look at in the development space we need a space for the youth to explore themselves and engage in the social actions so we learned that you know in our school we do uh, education systems and we concentrate on our books so we should you know open our books and open the world go and experiment as like in the previous speaker mentioned we should look at the nature experience it learn it there on so we started an another division called alter school which will engage with students and um, uh, colleges and recently started with the biodiversity register creation with panchayat and all across the river nila and there is another division works under that's uh, we uh, we we related it's a social arm of wiley that's called the uh, arangotar initiative for mankind that's basically we work with uh, mentally retarded people people who are face, basically facing Uh, challenges with you know mental illness and the students with the critical illness so that's area we work and uh, we closely work with the mahak and uh, we support uh, those patients part of that this is actually 
Wiley is meant for River Nila and why we united, why we started Wiley, that's basically for do something for our River Nila. River Nila is actually the second longest river uh, in Kerala and we wanted to do something. We, don't, we are not into any kind of an agitation or kind of mass movement in for preserving or conserving the River Nila, but we are sure that we are going to do only one thing, we document the rich tradition of River Nila. If you start the journey of River Nila, it originates from Tamil Nadu, flows into life uh, through Palakkad, Trishur and Malapuram and ends in Arabian Sea. Through the life of the river, if you look at it, it's backed in a very beautiful culture and tradition. Start with tribal, then into the uh, Carnatic music, then to the Kadamandalam, Karna, traditional, then finally to the Ponani with the Hindustani and Muslim tradition. You cannot see any such a uh, uh, rich tradition any other river in Kerala. This is the only river which you can see so much of culture tradition. So attempt we are going to actually, we have signed a contract with Sahabedia and we will be taking up a documentation process to uh, you know, document the cultural landscape of uh, River Nila. This is some of the information about that. This is the campaign we have started and uh, Live with Nila will be closely taking the youth for documenting and taking the tradition and culture of River Nila uh, into next level. The whole idea is that uh, we have some space available in Chaturthi. The whole idea is that we should put all the river related research documents, materials, everything into a common place. That's called a river museum. That's the whole idea we have. So that's what uh, we are trying to do. And the journey of Wiley started, as I mentioned it in 2004. It, the journey is still continuing. And uh, we have been part of uh, many achievements and award. And uh, uh, we won the first Swami Vegan in the Youth Award 2016. That was the first time they started. Then with the Change Looms Award with Ashoka, Delhi, and few awards. and. Uh, this is all about uh, Wiley uh, and that what we are we have been doing. And thank you very much, everyone, for listening to me. And it's a uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you.